Yo! Hey guys, I know it has been a while since we have dropped a video on the channel since our intro video. But if you guys have been keeping up with everything that has been happening in the country, as you guys are already aware, it has been a very, very tough time for us in the black community. Specifically with the killing of George Floyd, rest in peace to King, and of course, police brutality. As the events have been transpiring, us guys on the channel, and of course the black community as a whole, we've been doing our best to spread awareness and bring out everything into light because to summarize everything, man, enough is enough and we're tired. In addition, us guys in the channel and a couple of our friends have decided to have a conversation about everything that has been going on, which we will be sharing with you momentarily. Before we head on to the video of the conversation, if you can help on any shape or way or form, in the description link below, there's links to donations, petitions, um, websites, resources. Um, if you wanna educate yourself more on the Black Lives Matter movement, um yeah down there below otherwise i hope you guys enjoy you know the video and the conversation if um you guys have any comments or anything you want to share you want to express yourself please feel free to reach out to us otherwise the video okay hey, um we have a different video um in plan um really really different from what we usually put on our channel um, I feel like, you know, this will be a great opportunity, not just for me, but, you know, my fellow comrades here, you know, I mean, and all of us as a community to, you know, actually have a conversation and, you know, talk about what's been going on in the USA and with our community overall in general. Um, I feel like this is, you know, especially what's been going on in Minneapolis, um, a time to really, you know, voice our opinions and really, you know, start, you know, doing things to help out. You know, I mean, support one another, you know, I mean, with these tough times. Um, but before we start, you know, I mean, um, would you guys like to introduce yourselves? You know, everyone else? I'll start if you don't want to. What did you say okay. at the end? Uh, um, Marcus, get your face on here. Yourself. Yeah, you can introduce yourself, man. And then we'll just start along. Yeah, you can start first, yeah. Just a quick introduction. Um, um, my name is, um, my name's Dylan. Uh, and I uh, I go to the University of Massachusetts on the right hand side, and I was affected by this because I too am a young black man who just wants to succeed. And Darlington, why is your face on my screen? <laughs> Everyone, feel free to hop in uh, and just say, okay, you know, yeah, yeah. up quickly. Also, yeah, Darlington really yeah, yeah. just be looking at Haitian as hell for no yeah. reason right now. What's 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 going on? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I can go next. What's going on? My name's Kevin, Holy Boy Kev. Uh, I'm a student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. And um, yeah, bro, like obviously I'm here to talk about this just because, you know, we're you know, a black man in America. Pause, pause, pause. What do you mean pause? <laughs> no, Nick. Oh, y'all cut him off completely. No, do you see? It's all right, it's all right. Wait, <laughs> He's sprinkling like this. We cannot have a serious video of this. <laughs> Which is in the background, bro? You, you have to learn how to work with it, bro. Gotta, don't pay attention yet. Not not that we need, but just don't pay attention to it. Honestly, Wait, can I redo my introduction? Fuck it. No, no. <laughs> my introduction is what it is on this phone. Honestly, All right, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, I apologize. Can you read? No, no, no. Oh, you want me to go again? Okay, yes. you know, I'll um, go first and then you go. You got time to think. No. <laughs> you already <laughs> my name is Dylan what? and. Um, I'm a rising, <laughs> rising junior at the University of Massachusetts campus. Um, we're all here to talk about, you know, the current events that are happening right now. Um, the murder, we'll call it what it is, back then, um, to the losing of this currently happening in Minneapolis. Somebody else go. Um, what's going on? My name is uh, Kevin. Uh, Holy Boy Kev. Uh, I'm a student too at the university. Uh, what's so funny? What's so funny? Yo, what's so funny? You can't be this easily distracted. Uh, Kevin. <laughs> you can't be this easily distracted. <laughs> Just pretend he doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. But anyway, my name is Kevin. Holy Boy Kev. I'm a student at the University of Massachusetts Emerson. Me too as well. I'm also here to talk about this um, pressing issue that's going on in America. Not even with just... um um the um the mur the murder that took place recently in Minneapolis, but just like the other um, issues that was going on as well with um uh, with like Ahmad and um like other and other people as well too, just losing their lives just so senselessly. So yeah. 
Carlton, you can introduce yourself, sir. I was. <laughs> um, what's good? My name is Carlton. Um, I'm a rising junior at UMass, and I'm also here to discuss about like issues like that as well, current events, all that. Yes. Um, Marcus. It was, uh, yeah, Marcus. I was telling you, well, are you the person with the TV on in the background? Um, yeah. Will you hear uh, that? Yeah, yeah turn that off, please. Sounds like white. I muted him. <laughs> Marcus, let's go. All right. Uh, hi, my name is Marcus. Um, I'm a rising senior political science major. Um, so this is all really interesting to me about how this is all playing out. Um, I like, I like seeing how everybody else reacts to this. Um, I enjoy seeing both sides. I tend to respect one side more than the other, but it's just preset biases that were already there. But, uh, yeah. Marcus, you are in right now. What? Yes, my thought. Yeah, I'm going leave. <laughs> <laughs> I said you're looking real good right now, but your name is actually. And then I was going to say my name. I'm not sure if I could say that on this Beast Boys channel. Auntie Malcolm, what's up? So last but not least, have Chuko. Oh, I guess. Yeah, they already know who me and Tyler is already, and Malcolm already. So it's just really you guys. I guess. We want to give you guys a call. My name's Chuko. Working in physics. I'm not really going to volunteer much else information about myself, but you know, it is what it is. And I'm just here to talk about just the fact that black bodies in this country are consistently de devalued and underappreciated to the point that even uh, approximately 300, well, no, 200, and 200 years after the fact, we're still considered three fifths of a person, if that. Mm. Bars, that's bars. Whoa, oh my whoa, whoa, whoa. He's, he's coming. He's he's coming to bed. Also, Nick. Also, Nick's in the background making sandwiches. Yeah, we got oh, Nick yeah. in the background making sandwiches. You feel me? You know what I mean? You gotta get that bread. You feel me, bro? No, 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 he got them yoke charms. When I'm not making sandwiches, I'm a double S rated Domino's player. Just so y'all know. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> double S. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm just waiting for that. We got to freaking be a Kotsky or something, man. Oh my gosh. He's on the space table too. I also like he's in the he's in the bingo book. So, like how everyone got to introduce themselves. Um, yeah, let's start. You know, conversation. Let's have this talk, y'all. Um, first so, of all, just just first of all, like how how do y'all feel about it? Like, how do y'all feel? Is there enough being done? Is there, do you feel like the charges that they did get was fair? Um, do you think there should be more done, stuff like that? You know, so just entry conversation as to like how you feel about it and what you think could be done more on the situation. Not just that, the killing of George Floyd, but also other incidences. Um, I've, really been trying to, I've really been trying to stay civil about the whole thing, you know? Like, yeah. like um, uh, but I, I don't think that's really been working. You know? I think that this this uh, thing that's happening in Minneapolis right now with the looting and everything, it's like, yes, people are getting mad because things are getting destroyed and all whatnot. But it's like, that's only a fraction, not even. Like, that's not even a fraction of, like, the outrage that we all feel right now. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, think about, like, how mad, like, you can get and, like, multiply that by God knows how much. And it's like... We're not even there yet, so I don't. I don't really know how to how to really act. I for sure don't think that a man can lose his life and then another and the man who caused that just loses his job. I don't really think that's fair. But, he hasn't even lost his job yet. I feel that for sure. Yeah, he hasn't lost his job yet. Mm -mm. I saw a tweet that meant that it was just like. Just got put on leave. What's McCaw? Uh, uh, he's on leave. White, uh, the white woman who was calling the cops in the park lost her job. Yeah, 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 yeah she did. <laughs> So she gave up her dog. Uh, real quick. Man. Yeah, no, this just doesn't sit well with me at all. Like, I agree with Dylan, you know, it's been really, really hard to say civil about, you know, all of this, you know, that's been happening. Not even just this alone. Sorry, buddy. Um, because so many lives. <laughs> 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 
But Yo, Kiko, didn't he get terminated though? Like, does that not mean that he lost his job, or does that just mean no, he's on leave? Not to my knowledge, he's on administrative uh, leave, which means he's yeah, being paid leave, right now. I saw a tweet that meant that, like, that said that um, uh, Mayor, or whatever, said that it was the right call for him to be terminated. Yeah, terminate, doesn't terminate using me by? Oh, so they so he's actually fired. He's been fired. Not to my. I don't uh, think so. It's just he, because he I remember. Be fired, I remember seeing, I remember seeing a, um, whatchamacallit, like a, uh, like a interview, like a press conference from someone in, from someone in Minneapolis, in Minneapolis that was talking about how, uh, was, that was talking about how, like, charges shouldn't be brought. So I'm not necessarily, so I'm not necessarily sure if he's even lost his job yet, but mm-hmm. I could be wrong. I'm gonna do my Googles. I mean... Obviously, the um, the toxic I don't want to be wrong thing is he wants to say that, um, you know, I, I saw a tweet this morning saying that he, like from the mayor himself, saying that uh, it was the right call to terminate him. I don't know if that, like, if, if that goes into him actually being on leave or just being fired. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because regardless of whether or not one or the other happened, it's still not enough. And I don't really know if any legal action is enough. Uh, yes. Yes, he has been fired. He has not been arrested. <laughs> one point for knowing that. Oh no. Oh no. Because if you say that, then it's going to be one point for me. And then it's going to be like 9,000 for two. <laughs> you rang? Whatchamacallit? I also think that um, while we're on the to- while we're on the topic, I have a f- I feel like it should be both illegal and it is highly immoral for um, police officers to have their, in particular, their p- police brutality complaints closed or as a matter of non-public record. Because with the, with the officer with the officer in question, yes, he killed George Floyd, but he also killed um, a Native American a Native American man back in. Oh, they, they had like a running list of his other his like, charges. charges. Yeah, he chased like he chased a car and he chased the car in 05 that that like that led to the death of, of multiple people. He shot an unarmed black wow. man in 08. What's my God? He. He was one of the he was one of the cops that shot um, a, Lati- a Latino man when um, they, when there was about uh, when there was about forty shots fired off into him. Mm. What, and like and like even and like this is just the stuff that we know publicly. He also ha- he also has twelve he also has twelve other police brutality complaints slash cases that aren't a matter of public record. And I feel like That's crazy. And I feel like the fact that that information can be kept hidden from the public is, at best, highly irresponsible. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's actually quite terrifying. It's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. It is that they allowed someone to keep their job, you know, for so long with that track record. Yeah, it took it took a yeah. video of it for him to be like acquitted. Not even just it in fine print, like. Which arises another question. How many of these, you know, employers, you know what I mean, you know, are employed, you know what I mean, with really, really um, essential jobs, like a police officer, for example. Who knows, some of our nurses and stuff like that, you know what I mean, with that mentality, could be employed. To me, like, I feel like this this whole situation is just like, like, we already knew it before, but like, it's just extremified it to the point where it's like, yo, they really don't care about us. like. Like we already knew, like kind of in the back of our heads, but even even the p- positions that you think like they're supposed to be with us, or that they're supposed to be protecting us, it's like they can even turn to this when they're supposed to be doing like the right thing or the highest power. It's like, yo, they really don't care about us. And trying to take, I think the hardest part is trying to take all that rage that's been built up over generations and transfer it into something productive. It was like Dylan was saying, it's like we've tried everything else. Like we've tried being civil before we, and you, you guys still don't do anything about it. It's not on us to really make that change. We can't respond to any change unless you guys have made change first. Cause it's, it's mm-hmm. you're the ones who are killing us. Yeah. And then when we fight back, it's seen as violence. 
Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that's the best yeah. course of action because it's like, you know, it's it's cliche, but hate does breed hate. So it's like, how can we transfer this into something that's actually tangible is, is the mm-hmm. big goal. That's what I think is difficult. And I think a good step would definitely be like voter participation, even if the candidates are bad and law, like legislations to pass laws that would help stop some of this stuff. So it's like people who don't get any, the reason why people, racist people keep doing these things is because they don't foresee or they don't feel threatened by any sort of consequences. It's like, if you falsify information to the police, you should be fined or you should lose your job. I don't think people are trying to defend the white women like, oh, why did she lose her job just for doing that? It's like, what do you mean? Like, she was saying that the bird oh, was assaulting her when clearly that wasn't the case. So if you falsify information to police, that should be, it should be in law, That's that should be a fine or should be losing your job. And then if you murder an unarmed black man who wasn't, not even a black man, just any person of color, anyone for that matter, who wasn't resisting or fighting back, somebody who's unarmed and you kill them, you should be charged with murder. It should be a law that that's the thing, but it's not, it's not even anywhere in the fine print. It's just kind of a situational thing, like up to the- I think the, I think the primary issue with um, making it, uh, with making it a full on crime for um, somebody to falsify information to the police is one, it puts the it puts the onus on um, it puts the it puts the onus of acquittal on a fundamentally unjust uh, justice system, i.e. like i.e. like if you bring a like if you br- like say in particular you bring a rape charge to a uh, court and you don't and you don't win, just the fact just because the person doesn't nec- doesn't um, isn't charged as guilty doesn't necessarily mean it didn't happen and as a result and as a result you can get you can end up getting like putting the wrong people in jail just because the the justice system is shit in addition to the fact that um like in addition to in addition to the fact that like this like there's less incentive if there's jail time involved there's less incentive for people to um actually admit that they're lying so if they end up t- so and if they end up taking it to court like most of the most of these people are going to be relatively mid- like wealthy the upper the middle class like white people who have who have the money to um like who have the money to like take a lawyer for this case and like take it to to the fullest legal extent like available as opposed to as opposed to whatever black person is getting the cop call at them who probably can't mess who probably can't even afford to take off work to take off work to go to court, let alone like have like proper legal representation for the matter. That's true. So you're saying like a whole entire shift in the system itself would be the most beneficial thing, not just trying to play into it. Exactly. Yeah. Which is also like where I stand in terms of the in terms of like changing things from an electoral standpoint, because the fundamental because the fundamental problem is at the end of the day. Black people, black people are 13 percent of this country, and as a result, and as a result, uh, no can like no candidate like focuses primarily on like focuses primarily on black people and on and on actively serving and the issues of black people because th- because they know at the end of the day, what are we gonna do? Vote for Trump or vote for so- or vote for some other anti-black ass Republican who active who actively panders to niggas that hate us but so they so they won't so they won't necessarily so like they'll get into office and they're not gonna do shit and they're not gonna change it the same way that they, they haven't changed shit for for fucking decades on end because they don't have to because where's the because like where's the onus like obviously like obviously we can like obviously we can vote and i do encourage people to like get involved and like i think and i think personally we're much more impactful on the local level but like Look at this nigga Joe Biden. Sorry for nigga. Sorry yeah. for anybody that. Sorry for anybody Great that. Great example. Biden. Yeah, it's just tough. Nah, that's that's like you're not black if you you're not black if you vote for me. If you don't vote he, for me, like what can we like? But like since he's since he's literally the vote. only person who's not Trump that realistically has a chance of being of being elected. Like what are we gonna yeah. do? Like obviously yeah. if like obviously like if you're in Massachusetts, you can. Like realistically speaking, you can vote Green Party because the state is going to, is going blue either way. So like, that's like, so like that's still voting while not voting for Biden. But like, 
on the grander scheme of things from an electoral standpoint, that doesn't really change much. Yeah, because exactly. everybody else is voting the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about, about like the social media scene? Like, do you think that all the sharing of the videos is is a good thing, or is it traumatizing even more more traumatizing? Okay. Yeah, Kevin, I, 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 I can I can go on I can speak on this one. So for me, like when I saw like the video, I think I think I'm very like two faced on the video because I feel like in some cases like. Like those videos of like people that lose of like people that losing their lives like police brutality and stuff like that they can just be added in just for shock value and stuff like that and in a way it can kind of almost desensitize you to it because you, when you see it so many times you can almost become a bit desensitized to it i think that's like a running issue like uh, in america and i think with me as well because too like it's just like i feel like when i'm watching these videos i'm not as disgusted as i should be because it's almost like i've seen it so many times so uh, like the whole sharing of videos i think I think in in a way it it does shed light on um, the issue that is happening, but at the same time too though it can be a bit disrespectful to the person who's passed on and died. But I think in this case, I don't know. For me, I thought it was very um, useful for this video to, to be recorded and to really show and to really show what's happening because when I was watching the video, I, like it, it touched my heart deeply more than really um, other than the other videos I've seen in the past. Not saying that his life was more valuable than those other people. Those other people haven't lost. Them. And those other people are just like their lives are like weren't tra weren't tragic in their own right. But for me, when I was watching this video, the one thing that stood out that stood out to me for before was um, how he was saying like I can't breathe, I can't breathe and stuff like that. And then when he's in his like in his um um when he's on his neck in his final moments before he, like he passes out and then eventually goes on to die, he was crying out for his mom. And for me, that was like a huge is like was like a hugely like thing that hit that hurt me like a lot because like. I don't know, you guys probably know, but like, I'm like super like, like I'm like a kind of a mama's boy and stuff like that. I'm big into my mom and stuff like that. And seeing like in his final moments, like he was crying out for like his mom for like some comfort and stuff like that. That was like, that was crazy heartbreaking for me. I, like that my heart honestly couldn't take it. And then after afterwards in the video, just seeing like him eventually just like being unresponsive and then the cop like still having his knee on his neck, that was just, I, I, I've, I've never been, I haven't been, I can't think of the last time I've ever been this disgusted with, with such a case of police brutality ever in, in my life. This was just outrageous, it was unnecessary. And the thing is, it could have easily been prevented. There were people on the scene telling the cop to get off his neck. There were even other officers there, off, uh, uh, other officers there who was witnessing. There was another like officer who was like present trying to hold back the, the people and stuff like that. And I just don't understand like how they just let that thing happen because the man is unresponsive, but yet he, he's still allowed to have his knee on his neck. I think that's that's outrageous. So for me, I think the video in this case, I'm gonna say it, it's done a bit, it's done, it's, it's more of a positive in this situation for me, at least in my perspective, just because like for me, the way I reacted. And then I think, well, in terms of social media and stuff like that, I, I've been, I've been, um, it's, it's very mixed ways. I think from the black community, I think we, we, we've done pretty well with um, with the with the way we're handling it, just like the way that seeing everybody's been united, everybody's been tweeting and stuff like that, and support and supportive and stuff like that. I think it's very, I think it's been very impactful and very encouraging. But just also too, with just something that discouraged me, just like some people as well, and just some of the responses to it and stuff like that. Um, to like this incident has been like very disgusting. So like an example was um, it was like some people like mentioning about saying like oh. You're you're angry you're angry at this at this um, police brutality, but black on black crime you guys don't have this anger for. And I think that's that statistic that always annoys me because the thing about black on black crime is that black on black crime isn't an issue because people are black. Black on black crime is a thing that happens because if we people of the same race live close with in close proximity to each other, so therefore they perpetrate crimes for, against each other more more often than not. So like an example is like 90 percent of black people who are victims of crimes the perpetrator is black in comparison to 80 in comparison to like of like white victims who are victims of crime 82 percent of the perpetrators are whites and stuff like that so like white on white crime 80 at an 82 percent rate black on black crime at a 90 percent rate and stuff like that so you see the you see the very similarities like so i think that case is also ridiculous and i think it's also just another ridiculous statement too just because the issue with, with police brutality is that these people are called to protect and serve us and, and to and to like and to defend us and we paying these people people taxpayer money to do that but then yet they're in the streets taking our lives which is 
it's honestly just disgust, which is just disgusting. So I think that argument is terrible. I think the whole sort of all lives matter, um, people trying to come in and stuff like that. I think those people are just blatantly ridiculous and disgusting because just because obviously, of course, all lives matter. But the reason why you mentioned Black Lives, why we all Black Lives Matter, is because it does it seems to the point where people don't really understand that but clearly by the way we're being treated in america it seems that we don't matter so that's why we say that so but then they try to like play semantic games and say that oh all lives matter i think that's ridiculous. yeah it's definitely like a it's definitely like a downplay tactic to kind of like yeah. divert, I, divert attention yeah, yeah. Actually, agree, a, a huge because. downplay tactic bro it's honestly it's just ridiculous and then just um another another thing too i've just been seeing um, another issue that that's been, that's the same is that um I, I, y'all y'all know how I feel but I'm just seeing um Doja Cat and her and her tweet and stuff like that. Oh my god! 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 You're watching. It's just like you're watching yourself as donation box, and like it's just like, bro, like what are you doing? Like, are you just you're doing this for clout and stuff like that? How are you just gonna go, go and talk about saying that you are going and, and, and making fun for um for for George Floyd when me you know, just a few days ago you were out here shaking the room for the Klansmen on, on, on Zoom call? So how are you going to say do such a ridiculous thing like that? I thought it was ridiculous. I thought she was doing it for clout. I, I'm very much so disgusted right. by it. And then another last thing that discussed that um was really disgusting me about the whole thing. I think not. I, I, um, I'm going to go to Michael Porter Jr.'s tweet, and I wasn't disgusted by it. Michael Porter. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't like his tweet was essentially that like he was saying it's just like oh let's um pr- let's pray um um you pray for the family stuff like that, but also like pray for um um pray, um, pray for the uh, family as well too of um George. Um, we pray for the family of the star, the officers and stuff like that. And pray that the hearts change the life and stuff like that. And for me, like like for me, as you guys know, like I'm I'm a deeply devout Christian and stuff like that. I've been baptized for about a year. Um, for over a year now and I'm and I'm just and I'm deeply religious and into my faith and stuff like that. And actually in reality what he's saying, he's not wrong. The only issue is just that the timing and stuff like that is very it intense. It's the very time, the insensitive. Timing is awful. Terrible timing. To, it's a very. I, guess, I think it's the, the way he phrased it too. He could have phrased yeah, it. Yeah, the way. Yeah, the way he yeah. phrased it for sure. I think the phrasing. I don't know, more the issue, I think, but for me, what really got to me was the timing and just stuff like that. Just like like less than a tw- I think it was like less than twenty four hours even after the incident happened, stuff like that. And it's just like. I think I think it's very it's a bit it's insensitive and very insulting to um, the family of George Floyd, yeah, his family, his friends, and just all the people who were just affected by. It. I think that's a bit insult, very much so insulting as well. And then yeah. also one last thing that got to me was the people's reaction to the um the riots. And I think for me, <laughs> my issue was that um I I used to not really like see the sense in the riots and stuff like that. I was never really much so a fan of the riots, but I think now I'm starting to really much more understand the, the purpose of the riots because it's just because it's that like, we've been we, like, have as as has been mentioned before, we've tried to be peaceful. We tried, we, we tried taking the easy way around and stuff like that. But sometimes you have to like go and answer and respond and, and respond in a way that the, that the people who are oppressing you will understand stuff like that. So it's just like, if these people are violent people, sometimes it'll it'll really only just take violence for them for, for um for them to understand and a great example that somebody brought up is just that um the boston tea party and stuff like I that, during, think of that. Back, back during the um the american revolution stuff like that when they went and threw all the tea um overboard off the ships at the boston harbor into to, to pro to, um in protest and stuff like that and i think that's a great example and it's just it's always curious that you know when it's when it's rioting and stuff like that for um when it's like writing stuff like that for black people, it's suddenly an issue. But when it was back there in those times, when they were writing, writing for their for their rights from the British, it's perfectly fine, perfectly justified. So I think people and their and their two face and their double standard that they have is very showing. And then also, one more thing. I know I've been talking for a while, but one more thing. Say, is that, nah, it's really okay, man. This, is, this well. is what we want. Yeah. Men, men, yeah. 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 all the yeah. ideas. Boys, yeah. your opinion, uh, sir. Been, and Chuko, you will be next. I see you raise your hand. I've been chatting. I've been chatting. I've been chatting for a while, so I think I'm gonna fall back after this one. But I think also too that the silence from um, um from um non from also a non people like non black people color stuff like that. Just I've been seeing them be very much so quiet. So I think it also going to show show the term that black and POC are not inter- interchangeable terms stuff like that. Just seeing because 
But like before that, they they loving us. They loving the culture, loving the swag, loving the style, the way we talk, the way, loving we, dress, the way we carry style, stuff like that. But suddenly, now when we're going through, when we're facing real time some issues and stuff like that, now they want to fall back. And I think it's falling back to the point of like everybody wants to be black until it's really time to be black. So yeah, again, that's my closing there was, statement. There was another quote that was saying that everyone um, wants the rhythm, but not the blues. I think that's how it went. I feel like everybody sometimes deals with these situations in their own way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've never been one to like shame people for not posting a certain thing because they might be dealing with it in their own way. But I think there's certain intentions for like behind the intention behind it matters. If you're not sharing because you you're dealing with it, you're taking action in some other format, that's perfectly fine. But if you're not sharing because you know that you'll face backlash by doing so, by your peers or other people like that, that's when I think you've crossed the line. And it's like, all right, we know you're not for us, you know you're not supporting us, and it's really starting to show. So I think you have to be careful about like, I think even, just like, damn, I don't I think even with passiveness, like they just look at it and they just shrug it off and stuff like that. I think even with the passiveness as well too, that can be another issue and stuff like that. It's just. Because it's a, it's a problem that doesn't affect them, so then they become very passive to it. It's just that's you know, true. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a, it's a nice situation. Yeah. Like, like another thing that like I feel like as like a person, because like I obviously I've grown up like having all types of friends of all types of different races, and like I'm I'm still friends with them now. It's like to, like certain people to this day and stuff like that, but like. Like you said, like there's like the whole thing with like the intention and like the meaning behind it. But like if I see you like looking at all my like stories or whatever like that and like posts and whatever and like you you don't even like attempt to like like in some sort of way like try to boost like like try to boost the message, try to like get it out there and like really like try to like advocate for me and my people after like you know like years of friendship and stuff like that like i kind of like it kind of like clicks in my head it's just like like what it comes down to are, are these people really there for me it's like like certain people come up to mind or like that and I, like i notice i i sit there i watch i notice i'm pretty sure you guys too too it's like your non um black friends and everything like that and like I'm pretty sure they're probably gonna watch this video, or maybe not. I don't even know if they support the YouTube channel or not. But I feel like this is this is like a way of me telling you guys, like, like buck up. You know what I mean? Like, really, like you gotta you gotta understand like the injustice that's really happening in this country that is still happening in this country that's been happening for over 400 years in the country. And what is it? It's been about 63 years since the Civil Rights Act. If I cap that. Yeah, I think it's the thing, I think it's it's been, the thing that's holding like years. white people back from posting is that like they're scared that they're gonna face backlash as well. And it's like, what well, you need to you need to post anyways and feel that uncomfortability so you can feel sort of what we're feeling. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, well, so straight up, half of it isn't even um, them. Half of it isn't even them fearing backlash. Half of them is just them not caring enough to be like that. Like they understand. Like they understand on some on some level. Oh, like this is sad. Someone's dead. But they don't understand but they don't understand like the fact that it's an existential threat to black people everywhere and not just and not just some random stranger on the like that like all the way across america but it can genuinely be one of the black people that they know because it, because they're just like oh it's not that it's not that deep like i don't know him so like they're just like uh like I guess it's sad, but they don't care enough to actually try and change yeah, exactly, it. Because like, oh, but what I was, what I was trying to talk about earlier, my bad, sorry for cutting you off, up, but um, was that a lot of the people who I who I hear um, talking down on, in particular, on the rioting and on the rioting in particular, are people that I think have not, 
have not ever been on the ground when shit gets hot. Cause right. what you call it? Uh, I used to go, like, I used to go to the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, niggas used to protest, like, every week. And we've had more than our share of riots, uh, in, partic- in particular, the one that was, like, one of the biggest, like, while I was there was uh, when uh, Miley Mopolis came to our, um, like, came to our city. And the, th- and the thing is, in particular, that, like, nobody ever, like, no, like well, actually, some people do. But... 95% of the people involved in this type of stuff do not go out with the intention of starting a riot. In fact, I don't think anybody actually goes out with the intention of starting a riot. What ends up, what ends up happening inevitably is um, that people are peacefully protesting and then the cops get hot. No, and when the cops get, get a little bit too, when the cops get a little bit too physical, a little bit too pushy, then they start, then they start, set, then they start setting things off. Like, People have, like people haven't been talking about the fact that they that like the cops have been set I've been setting off tear gas and firing off rubber bullets into like into crowds of otherwise peaceful protesters. Like people want to like people want to talk about oh like oh they're stealing from Target. Yo, people are getting shot with rubber bullets. Fuck Target. Fuck a little two fuck a little two boxes of Target that are being that are being st- that are being stolen from a multinational conglomerate that's already insured anyways what's good y'all thank you for making it to the end of the video they hired me for the outro guess i'm that guy anyways if you like the video uh please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already you know what i'm saying why haven't you why haven't you it's cool i I won't take it personal but i mean i know we only got two videos but we're gonna up the stakes so just stay tuned you know what i'm saying this was just part one of our discussion on racial injustice so if you guys want to see part two please comment part two down below That'll be the deal. So yeah, I mean, these are confusing times, frustrating times, full of rage uh, at our system, at police brutality. Rest in peace, George Floyd, everybody else who was killed in a similar manner by uh, police brutality. So yeah, we're going to continue to discuss these issues. We want to be here to support y'all. So uh, just, you know, send us, any one of us, an email, or you can DM us directly on Instagram, whatever you want to do. So yeah, we're going to keep the videos coming. And like I said, let us know. Comment down below part two if you want to see that. And we'll keep it rolling, you know what I'm saying? Hope y'all have a good day. Peace.